I want to show you this morning my plant, my house plant setup that I use for plant maintenance in the winter in Alberta, which is about six months a year. And that it pains me to say that. I wish that our outdoor growing season was a lot longer, but it's not. So I just want to show you how I manage things for my plants. So um, I have this cart on wheels that I got um, from Ikea. And I keep this in my closet and I roll it out as I need it. Um, and lots of nice colorful Sharpies and plant stakes if I need to mark anything. And the colorful things are fun. So if the kids... Uh, my neighbor kids come over, I give them Sharpies to use. I have some insecticidal soap here for doing spot treatments for insects. I have my uh, treatment for fungus gnats. The only thing not in here is a potato. So these mosquito dunks actually have a bacteria that kills the fungus that the fungus gnats eat. So you can break that up, crumble it up, and either put it in water or apply it directly to your soil. These little yellow sticky tents you can put on the soil and it'll attract the fungus gnats to it. Um, you can get them as sticky strips as well that you can put in your plants. And uh, the other thing that I use is just a piece of sliced up potato sitting on the surface, cut side down on the surface of the plant. And the fungus gnats, the larval stage, likes to eat the potato. So I take that potato every day, toss it out, get rid of it. Um, here is my very professionally developed tutorial for fertilizers. So essentially your fertilizers have three numbers and the first number is always nitrogen and it's for green leaves. Your second number is phosphorus. That's the P in NPK. And that number is for develop that phosphorus is used by the plant for developing healthy roots and blooms. And the K is potassium, sometimes we call that potash, and it's used to help your plant be disease resilient. And you will see fertilizers that have a variety, they're not all 20-20-20. When you hear someone recommend a balanced fertilizer, that's what that is, 20-20-20. But there's lots of other ones. So I use a 10-52-10 for when I'm my seedlings are growing. So once I'm at about stage three, when the cotyledons are out and I'm into first leaf stage with my seedlings, I use 1052-10. Um, I have a Norfolk pine in my house. So that's what this is. This is a 30-10-10. And I, because I keep them all in this tray, I have written the number and the plant that it's used for on the top of everything so I can see it really easily. So this for the orchid, 25-10-10. Lots of um, nitrogen needed for that orchid, for my Thelenopsis orchids. And I soak those. I'm just doing it right now. I blend that feed with water, and then I soak the orchids in the sink until they're heavy and ready. Um, I'm just trying to rehabilitate. These were two orchids that were about to die, and uh, they're not about to die now, so they're putting out healthy new shoots and some air roots and some new leaf growth and so that is working well feeding your plants is really vital um so i've got some african violet fertilizer here this is my cactus fertilizer and this is just my regular old house plant fertilizer and the other tool that i use regularly is this pitcher so i took a measuring cup and i measured out one liter and i measured out a liter and a half and i that makes feeding the plants super easy. I have read the instructions on these containers and I know that one um, squeeze, this liquid plant feed is a dropper. And I've already figured this out, that one full squeeze of that dropper is what you need in a one liter of water for regular maintenance of your plants. So I just take a squeeze, unload it, Pop it in the pitcher, fill the pitcher to the one liter mark with water, distilled water or tap water if that's what you've got, and use that to feed the plants. So that is my setup. I've got a few other things in here. I usually have like a pair of scissors that I use if I need to prune any bad stuff off. Um, this is my little seeding tools and transplant tools for seedlings. But that is my everyday every week 
maintenance buggy. And when I'm done with the plants, with doing my watering at the sink, or I roll it over here to where I have a grow light. Things are a little messy right now. They're um, doing a snow sculpture across the street. So that's why I have my tripod set up. Um, I have a grow light set up here in the living room and these are all on timers. So these are mostly succulents and violets. The violets are quite a ways from the light, which is fine because they don't need as much bright light. Um, this is an interesting violet because it's chlorotic. So the leaves are not as dark green as they should be. And this is actually a clipping from this plant. So I am, instead of using violet fertilizer on this, I am using um, the evergreen or the orchid fertilizer on this because it has a higher N, the first number, and a lower K, the third number, lower potassium because an excess of potassium can actually show itself as chlorosis. So I'm just testing that, changing my nutrient regimen, and I'm starting to see some, some payback on that, a little bit of dark green in the center of these leaves here. So uh, yeah, that's the uh, living room set up. That's how I deal with the plants in the dead of winter in Edmonton for six months a year. <laughs>